Welcome to March Madness Minute number 13. Today we're going to look at Google Forms. Google Forms is a pretty page where somebody can enter information. On the back end, all that information is going to be stored in a Google Sheet that you'll have access to. So Sheets and Forms work together. Now it does get a little bit confusing because there's four different ways to look at your Google Form. There's the Edit Form where you're going to be creating the form itself, deciding on what questions you want to be asked and what that format looks like. There's the live form. That's where your people are going to be able to see a nice looking page and enter information. The summary of results is where it's automatically going to graph all of your data. And then there's the sheet of raw data itself. So we're going to start with yesterday's Google sheet. So yesterday's scenario, everything was entered by the teacher, the names and the times, but now we can create a Google form so students can enter their own times and then the teacher could just look at all of the results. So we're going to go to insert form. And as it pops up here, let's add questions. Now on this page, there's three things that you really want to look at. There's the settings, the questions themselves, and then the confirmation page. What do you want it to do when they hit enter? So let's start at the top. So do you want to require a Camus login? If this was something you were sending out to parents, like a survey, you're going to make sure to uncheck that. And actually I'm going to uncheck it in this response as well or in this example, um, I could automatically collect usernames as well. If I was doing a test, I might have students log in and then also automatically collect their username. Uh, I don't need a progress bar. I really don't want only one response per person. I want many throughout the year and I don't want to shuffle the question order. So I'm actually leaving all of those blank. And then at the bottom, I usually try to fill this out first before I forget the confirmation page when they hit submit. Um, I'm just going to have it say thank you. And I'm going to also allow a link to another response so that if I'm in, I'm thinking about a PE class, I'd only have a few devices. So possibly, so I, I'd want the next kid to be able to just uh, hit another response. And I don't want them to see everybody's responses when they hit submit. And I really don't need them to edit. So we're done here. So the center is where all the magic happens. This is where you're going to actually ask the questions. So I'm going to just hover here and it allows me to click and I want to put a title mile run. I don't think I need any extra information here. And then here's my question. So it already gave me one that just says untitled. So I need to hit the pencil to edit and I want their name. And there's a lot of question types here. Let's see for their name. I'm probably going to choose from a list that way it doesn't take too much space on the page. And the student names, I'm trying to think of some of the names I used yesterday, June. Uh, there we go. So we have some names. If I wanted them in a different order, maybe I want them alphabetical. I can touch those little dots and move them around. Nope. And I think that's it. I'm just going to put a few names here to get us started. And I do want to require this information done. And you could have students enter their own name. I like to provide their names for them. And that way I know that they're entered the same way every time, which will allow us some of those things like the pivot table. So if a student wrote their name as Michael one day and then Mike the next day, it's the computer is not going to know that that's the same person and it would separate their data. And I really want them to be consistent so I can do some uh, extra work with their information. So now I need to ask another question. I'm going to go to add item and let's see. So we want their fall time for the mile and this is not multiple choice. It's a time question. So I'm going to click on time and it's not an AM PM kind of question. So I'm going to click on duration. So now I have hours, minutes, and seconds, and I'm not going to require this and you'll see why. So I've got my fall time. I want to duplicate this question so that they can use the same form all year. So fall, winter, and we'll duplicate. Spring. And I also want a place for a comment at the end. And that, I'm going to choose paragraph text comment. 
Okay, so I've got my questions, their name. If I had multiple periods, I'd probably also want to ask for periods so I could separate my classes out. Okay, so now we're ready for the best part. Change the theme. We're going to make it look pretty. And I know there's one with a banner, which kind of reminds me of running. So let's find that one. There we go. We've got our banner. And we want to go to view live form. So this is the an important part. You want to make sure this is the URL you're using to share with students. You don't want to do your edit form. You want to make sure you're in the live form. And if I chose, I could click on my URL shortener. And now I could post a short URL or maybe even post a QR code so kids could quickly scan to get to my survey and enter their information. So let's enter a little data. So if I'm Caleb and I'm running my winter mile, it, hopefully it didn't take me hours, but we'll put in a few minutes here. Um, we'll say 810. I loved running in the rain. and submit and here's my thank you so now i can have another student pop in choose their name and their winter time and hit submit and i didn't make this required so i can go ahead and hit submit so that's how students would enter information i'm going to go back to my Google Sheet here, and it made a new tab, and it looks a little spread out. I know this can be a harder page to read, but I'm going to make these a little bit narrower, and I can see my times. So this is my raw data here, and as people enter, hit submit, you'll see those start to populate. Now there's one more thing I wanted to look at. Let's go back to our Google Form. If I click here, I now see there's two responses. And I want to look at the summary of responses. So I can see how many people have taken this. Um, I don't have any fall or spring times, but for winter times, those, uh, those times are coming in and all the comments are down here. Now this isn't maybe the best example. If I was asking maybe to rate yourself on a scale of one to four, you'll see all sorts of graphs that are automatically created. So tomorrow we'll look at a little more detail, but this should get you started with Google Forms. Thanks.